Talking to, to Kevin Smith, who's a climate campaigner at Platform, which is a, a UK NGO that uh, looks at oil and gas finance and the oil and gas industry in particular. Kevin, why has RBS um, made the headlines today? Well, I don't know if people have had the chance to see The Guardian today, but on the front page there's the headline that uh, RBS avoided £500 million pounds of tax in global deals, which is exactly what we're here talking about today. This is a report in The Guardian that's uh, unearthed evidence of 13 different deals of uh, mega sums of capital being shifted about different tax havens in, around the world uh, and being passed along from different banks. Uh, and, they, and this is uh, uncovered the fact that they've avoided paying 500 million pounds of tax. Now the important thing about this is this is only 13 deals that we have evidence of being uncovered by The Guardian. Uh, the reality is there's lots more that haven't been covered uh, and, and more sums of money that haven't, uh, that haven't been paid like this. In response to this, RBS is saying they're, um, they're closing down the division that's been responsible for these deals. Um, and they're hoping to kind of get good publicity out of kind of responding to, to this uh, article like this. But really, uh, these sorts of tax avoidance deals require large sums of capital that RBS don't have at the moment anyway. So they, they wouldn't be able to do this anyway. Uh, Apart from this, uh, it's, it's not good enough that there's just some voluntary retraction of RBS in doing this. There needs to be uh, some uh, more explicit form of regulation stopping this from happening. Uh, and the government's been in a prime position to impose this regulation as a condition of the bailout, but it hasn't done that. As we've seen, the kind of the bailout's largely been a, a blank check, uh, and where the government could have been stopping this sort of thing from happening, it, it hasn't. Uh, even before the financial crisis, RBS was a very controversial bank in Britain. Can you, can you give a bit of detail on that? Well, RBS has gathered a lot of very negative publicity in the recent years because it's been uh, pointed out that it's the UK bank that's most heavily involved in financing uh, coal, oil and gas infrastructure projects around the world. Uh, and in doing so, it's really responsible for accelerating uh, climate change because of all the, uh, the tons and tons of carbon dioxide that are embedded in its investment portfolio through its financing of these projects. Uh, it's in, between 2001 and 2006, it was responsible for $10 billion worth of finance for new oil and gas projects. Uh, and in 2006, it was shown that the emissions that were embedded in RBS's fossil fuel finance was actually bigger than Scotland itself. Uh, and then a, this report that came out in 2008, uh, cashing in on coal, it was shown that RBS was the UK bank that over a two year period was more heavily involved than any other uh, UK bank in financing new coal uh, around the world. It was responsible for an estimated $16 billion worth of finance within that two year period. Um, up until recently, RBS was even self-styling itself as the oil and gas bank. It recently took down uh, the oilandgasbank.com website that it, that it had. Uh, and so in the face of all we know about climate change, um, it's really irresponsible that these uh, big financial institutions are providing the, the means to uh, extend the fossil fuel frontier around the world. And that, I mean, this is of particular significance in the UK context, but also internationally, because government and, and uh, our Prime Minister Brown has said that any fiscal stimulus should be a green fiscal stimulus. So, since uh, the, the takeover of, of RBS by the UK government, has there been any change in its lending powers? Well, I mean, the government's doing all it can to uh, to uh, to get banks to start lending again. But uh, RBS doesn't seem to have had a problem in lending, in to, to keep lending to the fossil fuel industry since the uh, the financial crisis. Uh, since the first bailout started happening, RBS has been involved in ten billion pounds worth of finance to uh, coal, oil, and gas projects. That's almost a third of what the total bailout has, has happened. Uh, it, it's also, it's been involved since the first bailout happened. It's been involved in financing uh, energy company E.ON, 
which very controversially wants to build the first coal-fired power station in 34 years in the UK, as well as uh, more than 10 other coal and gas power stations uh, across Europe. It's also just in the last week being involved in a multi-million credit facility for Tullow Oil, which is operating in a politically sensitive region uh, in Uganda. Are there any other uh, RBS has also uh, financed uh, Opti Canada, which is involved in the hugely controversial tar sands extraction in Canada, which is having uh, horrific consequences for indigenous peoples who are having to endure this uh, tar sands extraction, as well as uh, terrible impacts in the context of climate change. Uh, it's also uh, financed London Oil, which is very active in Sudan. Uh, and there's a report by the Genocide Information Network, uh, which points a finger at London and is saying that 70% uh, of the oil revenues being generated in Sudan is going towards military spending by the government, uh, which, is, which is then being used against the uh, civilian population in Sudan. Um, now that, that RBS is effectively nationalised, what is the relationship between the government and the bank? Well, the, uh, the government's created UK Finance Investment, a, uh, a limited company to manage the, uh, the public investment in, in RBS. Uh, and that's on its board, there's the uh, Sainsbury CEO as well as three hedge fund managers a part of the board managing this. So I think it's unlikely that we're, we're going to see any uh, real change in, in, in the way UKFI is going to be trying to influence the policy direction of RBS. Um, but the difference now between RBS and many of these other financial institutions that we've been looking at today is that it's effectively uh, a nationalized institution. And as such, there's more uh, opportunities to exert leverage because uh, as, as taxpayers on the government to, to make changes uh, in the way RBS operates. Uh, and all this talk of, of uh, regulating, uh, re-regulating the banking sector it shouldn't be limited to the relatively cosmetic business of, of capping executive bonuses, but it needs to be going to the heart of the ways uh, international finance is structured through tax havens like this, and also the way these banks are doing incredible damage in the context of climate change by bankrolling all these new fossil uh, finance around the world. So, if RBS is getting money from the British taxpayer, would you expect that uh, branches like this in tax havens should be yeah. uh, it, it's, it's criminal that uh, taxpayers' money is being used in this way by RBS in avoiding uh, generating tax revenues, especially at a time when the climate crisis is going to mean a massive increase in public spending in order to be able to uh, uh, start restructuring our economies and our transport away from these kind of carbon intensive ways. So now more than ever, these, these kind of tax revenues are really important. Uh, and we can't address the financial crisis without simultaneously addressing the climate crisis. Uh, and that's why uh, it's really important that we see uh, the environmental impacts of these banks as a really key way of, of, of the damage they're doing as well as the, uh, the, the financial problems they're creating for these sorts of systems. Has anyone got any questions?